And now we're ready to answer the question of the inverse functions. Why is it arcus? It is because when measuring in radians, an angle of theta radians will correspond to an arc length in a circle whose length is r theta, where r is the radius of the circle, and in the unit circle where r is 1. The arc whose cosine is x is the same as the angle whose cosine is x. Therefore, arcus is arc. Because the length of the arc of the circle in radii is the same as the measurement of the angle in radians. We've just gone through that. Arcus therefore simply means arc. Arcus cosine tells you the arc in radians whose cosine is x. And now that we understand that we can draw triangles inside and outside of circles, we can define a bunch of trigonometric functions that you see here. These trigonometric functions might not be so useful for you right now, but at least you understand them. Now you've got the visual definition of all of these. The useful part comes now. Using your mind's eye, imagine the radius of the circle moving around, the angle changing, it all cycling. If you imagine that you see that the triangles and the sides of the triangles change, if you plot this change, this length of this triangle against the radian, the angle in radians, the angle in the middle, theta, in radians, you will get a trigonometric function, or to be more precise, the plot of a trigonometric function. Let's start with a wave. Understanding the sine function is probably the simplest of all three. Let's take the circle and roll it out onto a line. So what we're going to get are angles represented on a line, either in radians or like here in degrees. If you plot how high the radius of the way of the circle is as the thing moves around, the radius moves around, you will get a very simple sine function. You can almost see this moving as it starts from zero up to 30 degrees, up to 60, now to 90. It's the peak, it's the peak of the wave and then it starts going down and it completes the cycle that means completing a wave the circle is periodic and so is the wave it returns exactly to the position it was before and then it continues from then on it's infinite it cycles around infinitely looking back at the older image we see that the cosine is just 90 degrees away. The wave is the same. It's the same thing, just shifted 90 degrees. And the co pair, the complementary pair, will always be 90 degrees apart from the original. The other thing we see is theta, the angle. It's given as omega t. t is time, and omega is something called angular velocity basically means how fast the cycle cycles around. We may also think of the sign as only tracking the y direction, the y axis of the circle, and the cosine only tracking the x axis. And the progression of the wave, you can think of that as time. So as time goes forward, as the circle goes around, how does the position of the projection of R onto the Y axis change. What is the length from zero? 
just look at it a little more and get it into your head because believe it or not if you have this image you have everything you need for today everything connected to the complex numbers and the other uh, waveforms or the other trigonometric functions are just fancy ways of looking at this we're gonna be looking at the same thing from now on now we have the image but we don't have the fancy ways the fancy words to talk about it but essentially what we have in front of our eyes is the connection between a circle and a wave any wave will have a kind of circle connected to it and any circle will have waves in fact two waves 90 degrees a sine and a cosine these might also be scaled so if you multiply them you'll scale them up the peaks and the troughs will be big if the circle goes slowly you'll find bigger wavelengths it will all uh, span out 